Welcome to the Marshall Islands, but more specifically the Kwajalein Atoll. The Kwajalein Atoll is made up of 97 small islands, of which 11 of them, including the Kwajalein Island, are leased to the U.S. from the RMI under an agreement called the Compact of Free Association. The Kwajalein Island is the southernmost and the largest island in the Kwajalein Atoll. It's about three and a half miles long and a half mile wide. You can enjoy warm sunny days with palm trees swaying and coexist with state-of-the-art radars and tracking systems. Oh, and what's that? An airplane? No, it's just one of the many test-fired ballistic missiles from California just splashing down into the waters of the lagoon. These islands serve as the Pentagon's main testing site for ballistic missile interceptors. Kwajalein Island serves as a housing area for the 1,500 U.S. military personnel, contracted workers, and their families. Life on Kwajalein has been described as a small-town American community from the 1960s, where no one privately owns any automobiles and their form of transportation on the island is by bike or boat. Residents of Kwajalein have several dining facilities, two schools for their children, a medical and dental service department, and numerous recreations. Organized sports are made available, complete with a bowling alley, 24-hour gym, skate parks, an air-conditioned bar, a golf course, a movie theater, and the ability to rent water skis, sailboats, and even powerboats. In terms of religion, they do have a Roman Catholic priest and a Protestant chaplain, where both groups meet at the Island Memorial Chapel for Sunday congregations. Services are also held there for Baptists and Jews. From what I have gathered, the few problems that Kwajalein has are the funding for their renovations and new housing units by 2022. They even have plans to build a brand new hospital on the island. However, the U.S. lease on Kwajalein ends in 2016, but so far, the Americans see themselves staying for another 50 to 70 years. Right now, the Marshallese are demanding a 4 million hike in the annual rental of the atoll, but the Americans are resisting which, let's be honest, is a relatively small price to pay given that running the base costs the U.S. more than $200 million a year. For the Marshallese people, the American experience on Kwajalein has been a double-edged sword. They were liberated from the Japanese in 1944, forced off Bikini Atoll for atomic tests, only to be poisoned by radioactive dust swept from the Bravo test in the 50s, and then evacuated from their island homes to be relocated on what is now known as one of the worst slums in the Pacific the island of Ibai. Three miles north of Kwajalein, Ibai is the most populous island of the Kwajalein Atoll, holding more than 15,000 people out of the country's entire population, which is 53,158 people, also making them the fifth most densely populated island in the world. At least 50% of the population is under the age of 18. In terms of their economy, more than 1,300 Marshallese work on the U.S. Army base on Kwajalein making the U.S. Army the biggest employer in the Marshall Islands. Earning $5 an hour and doing menial jobs like cleaning swimming pools, manicuring golf courses, and serving food to personnel at the food court. But for most of the island, many remain unemployed. Life on Ibai is very different and more difficult from life on Kwajalein. Ibai is challenged with crowded living conditions, an inadequate school system, and scarce clean water. Water runs sometimes only two to three days a week. Power outages are frequent, and their sewage system is dysfunctional and old. But their current problems don't stop there. Many Marshallese have resentment towards the relationship with the U.S., as many are upset with the fact that the U.S. won't fix the mess they made of Ibai. They say that they don't want to get involved because they are their own sovereign nation. Other problems include the Marshallese health, where infant mortality is 52 deaths per thousand, compared to the U.S.'s rate of 7 per thousand. Ibai residents are the most dependent on imported food sources in all of the RMI, meaning their diet consists of mainly canned goods, junk foods, drinking sodas, and beer. Many Marshallese are overweight and have health problems associated with obesity. At least 30% of the Marshallese have diabetes. Today, the TB rate is 23 times that of the U.S., and other infectious diseases are widespread due to unsanitary living conditions. Alcoholism is also a major problem on Ibai. Most of the criminal acts here involve the use of alcohol and practically all suicides occur after drinking. The Marshall Islands has a high suicide rate for youths, especially with young males, that is up to 10 times higher than the U.S. Many researchers attribute the high number of suicides to rapid westernization that has eroded the strong extended family system. Young men don't feel valued by their family and communities as they did in the past. In the old days, they had a role in society and there was no such thing as loneliness. But nowadays, there's confusion and lack of understanding of where they belong. Free 
created using Paltoon.